the challenges for delivering this refurbishment were revolved around the intrinsic nature of what we're trying to do, where we're trying to overlap the building with a new external envelope, providing new insulation and air timers to achieve the passive house benefit standard. The problem, as you can see with the building behind us, is that we're having to provide a lot of structure um, to hold up the new overcladding, and we're having to pin the structure back to the existing building and that inherently breaks the new insulation and the new levels of air tightness that we're trying to achieve within the project. There are lots of challenges in aiming for the NFIT standard. Um, the primary energy target, which is um, really challenging for us to meet for this project because the building is electrically heated um, and there's no plans to replace the electric storage heaters with any new kind of heating system. Probably the biggest single challenge that we've had on this project has been getting an existing building which is full of leaks airtight whilst having residents in occupation. Uh, and obviously uh, doing a scheme of this nature uh, with residents living in the building uh, in effectively a building site does create uh, certain constraints for keep moat uh, whilst they're undertaking the work. So certainly from a resident's perspective, the main ambition for the block was around improving the thermal efficiency of the building and making sure that we have more efficient heating and that's being achieved by uh, insulating the fabric and reducing the heating demand. Essentially to completely super insulate the building, wrap the whole fabric um, and to um, improve the ventilation, to provide mechanical ventilation with heat recovery, to seriously address the fuel poverty issues in the building and to transform the appearance of the building completely. So we've had to do a lot of training uh, with, the, with the workforce, contractors' workforce, to show them what the main problems of the design. We've um, put together a mock-up of one of the most difficult details. Which is an existing mock-up of one of the junctions on the properties. We've used that for them to practice their air tightness and sealing techniques. And that has helped them on site put together the building as you see behind me. The main issues of the, of the, uh, of the insulation and the air tightness is we're trying to get continuity of both. We've had to model that very cleverly using the PHPP on the Passive House. And, um, and that has enabled us to predict the thermal bridges that we're getting where we can't get the continuity of thermal insulation. And on the air tightness level, we've, been, we've done more testing of the existing building to get a, a much better understanding of, of, of the current levels of air tightness to show what we have to do to, to reach our higher targets. The resident engagement has been one of the key learning uh, areas for the project uh, from a council's point of view. We've really tried to engage with the residents in a different way. Both PCC uh, and Keepmo have uh, used resident liaison officers throughout the project to uh, inform the residents and also to go and meet the residents on a one-to-one -one basis and make sure that we uh, get good information about what matters to the residents. The improvement beyond building regulations will pay for itself within 16 years uh, in terms of uh, fuel savings to the residents. Many of the residents are paying in excess of £2,000 a year fuel bills in excess of uh, 160 kilowatt hours per meter square per year. We're taking that down to 25. You can imagine what an impact that's going to make on fuel bills. Um, so it's going to make a, a significant difference. One of the key issues going forward is to maintain that learning and, and, and take that forward with the teams and develop that and spread the knowledge as we've gone on to blocks B and C with A being the, the learning curve. Because this project's been uh, done very differently to any other project that we've done, we've been very keen to monitor performance um, of this project to see how effective it really is going to be. We're linking in with uh, London School of Economics um, and they're doing um, uh, individual interviews with uh, a selection of residents in the block. Uh, so it's not just about the council just doing the work to the block, but we'll be able to ascertain what impact and effect it has on the lives of the residents that are actually living there. Uh, Agility Eco have put in um, data loggers uh, that transmit data on the air quality and temperature of a sample of properties, uh, and then the BRE will be analysing that data, and again we'll be able to monitor the effect both pre and post uh, the work actually being undertaken.